Thanks for joining us, everybody. First question for head coach Jay Johnson. We'll go Brian Peterson. Hey, Jay. Uh, so I, I know you already knew enough about Vanderbilt just in general, but after the study, what, what stands out even more than you already knew? Yeah, talented team. And we have all week, we're going to get into it in more detail. Uh, I think getting our team organized has kind of been the priority over yesterday and this morning relative to travel, COVID testing, uh, hotel, all of those kinds of things. So most of our time has been spent towards that. As we move into practice tonight, it'll get ourselves reset in terms of where we're going. And then uh, heavily tomorrow, we'll start looking at them the way we do every other team, being that we play Saturday, the week backs up, you know, one day. So uh, today kind of serves as Monday, you know, and so on. So um, talented pitching staff, uh, confident team. Uh, CJ Rodriguez, their catcher, is a really good player. He's a West Coast guy. Carter Young, their shortstop, is a really good player, West Coast guy. They have a couple good arms out of the bullpen and uh, as advertised. So going to be a good game, and we're looking forward to it. You had mentioned on Sunday that it, you kind of saw the possibility of this matchup from, from the day that the, the bracket was uh, released. Does that benefit you in any way that you've, you've been seeing this on the horizon? I don't think so at all. I mean, you guys know me. It's a day-to-day, game-to-game, pitch-to-pitch, inning-to-inning type thing. And all of our focus, um, you know, was on the regional round relative to Grand Canyon, UC Santa Barbara, Oklahoma State, and then Ole Miss. <laughs> Sunday night when I put the file in my file cabinet on Ole Miss, I was very happy relative to put that one away and then get on to the, to the next one. But I haven't thought about Vanderbilt, you know, until after the Ole Miss series was over. Are, are you trying to, to make sure that this this trip, in addition to being a business trip, that it's also an experience for your players, that they make the most out of this beyond just the games itself? That I think that's a big component of being successful, you know, on the business trip is compartmentalizing both of those things. I'm anticipating a little bit different atmosphere because of COVID relative to the external things, but it is, you're correct. It's a reward for a great season. And then we're going there to try to win the national championship. So I think it's just being where your feet are and being present is really, really important. You know, enjoying, you know, the charter flight, you know, enjoying the things that go along with being at the College World Series and knowing uh, when the line is, when we're training out there tomorrow, Thursday and Friday to be in tune with what we're doing. Game prep, being in tune with what we're doing. And then also being able to, to relax and enjoy it. I think by compartmentalizing well, I think that actually helps you play better on the field. Thank you. Next question, Michael Lev. What's your schedule this week in terms of practices and when you're going out there? Yeah, we're going to work out uh, tonight here at High Corbett, mainly relative to the, the temperature and to keep our, our players in tune with, uh, you know, hydration, rest, health, all of those types of things. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we will work out uh, and lift here. And then we have a tentative flight schedule for uh, early tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we'll land and we'll practice in Omaha tomorrow, uh, get to COVID testing tomorrow night, and then practice in Omaha as well on Thursday and then the, the stadium practice day on Friday. Where are you practicing in Omaha? Um, on Thursday, we are at Nebraska, Omaha. Uh, tomorrow on Wednesday, we'll practice at Creighton. Great. Okay. Um, so you often talk about like sort of not making things bigger than they really are, trying to sort of block out all the external factors, um, you know, college world series, premier program in Vanderbilt, maybe the most, you know, two most famous players in college baseball currently. How can that kind of message of not making it bigger than it is help you uh, in this opening matchup? I think the mental discipline that our players have exhibited to this point in the season in being able to block out things and understand that they don't have anything to do with the play or the performance has led them to good performance. And so we need to really utilize our experience and our discipline in doing that. And that in itself will help us play to our maximum potential, which gives us a great chance to be successful. With them having, you know, two aces who are almost equal in ability, is you basically looking at it like it could be either one of them and we have to prepare for either possibility? 
yeah, we'll be prepared for no matter who we face through the entire tournament. And then the good thing about Omaha is you have the built-in off days and especially being in bracket one and uh, we will, we'll be ready for anything. Sure. And one last thing on scouting, do you still do the same exact procedure for Stanford or do you have kind of a head start with them and maybe not have to put in quite as many hours? Parts of it uh, will utilize what we've done to this point. I have always been more comfortable in second matchups throughout a season, whether it's Arizona State uh, or somebody we've played later at the Grand Canyon this year in a regional to go back and start over. And that's just my own personal opinion. But, you know, there's things that uh, Coach Wanaka and Coach Lon do with the positioning that we can carry over some of that stuff. There's things with the, you know, maybe the pitch plan that Coach Yeski will rely on at the same time is we haven't played those guys for what will probably be a month or a little over a month if we were to see them again. And I think players and, and teams change. They obviously played incredibly well at Texas Tech. Uh, we need to look at what they've done recently because that's probably a little better indication of where they're at today. Next question, Eric Olson, Associated Press. Yeah, Jay, uh, Eric with uh, AP up here in Omaha. Hey, uh, when you came up here five years ago, uh, not a ton of offense uh, in the tournament. Uh, it's a big ballpark, as you know. Tons of home runs hit this year throughout the tournament. I was just kind of curious. Your team has good numbers offensively across the board, you know, whether it's home runs, doubles, triples, and all that. Uh, can you kind of address how this ballpark up here plays and how that might be different than maybe what uh, teams have uh, seen uh, so far in the tournament? Yeah, for sure. First off, it's great to see you again. Anytime I'm talking to you, it's usually a positive thing. So um, yeah, we're, we're excited to be back there. Um, you know, relative to TD Ameritrade, I mean, it's the only place you want to be this time of year. So that's a positive. I think the difference maybe in, in playing here and playing there is the dimensions are very similar with our field and TD Ameritrade. How the park plays this time of year is a little bit different. I mean, it's hot and it's light air out here in Tucson. You have a little more humidity ball doesn't carry as well. The last couple of years, um, and there was no Omaha last year, so I'll just say 2019, it seemed like there was more home runs hit, there was more offense, that type of thing. I think what I like about our team is we're built to win any type of game. You know, we have speed, we have strike zone discipline, we have power, we have ability to hit with runners in scoring position, we have, you know, solid bunning game. Uh, we're really good at running the bases. So we're not going to be pigeonholed into any, you know, one way or, or type of game that's going to put us at a, a tough deal. Somebody's going to have to pitch and play well uh, to hold us down. And so I think that creates an advantage, but you're talking about seven other teams that are really good teams too. So they probably have a roadmap and blueprint that can help them be successful. We'll put most of the focus into what we do well. Oh, you guys got to the finals uh, back in 16 and, I mean, you guys had some incredible pitching that year, uh, as I as I recall, a couple guys. Uh, so, I mean, whereas pitching is always important, no matter what, does it get more of a premium uh, when you get to Omaha? I think so, just because you're going to run into good good pitchers. I mean, we certainly have a couple. We're very deep in the bullpen, um, which is a strength of our team. You know, you look at Stanford. You know, Brennan Beck, I think, was the pitcher of the year in the Pac-12. Uh, and then you look at Alex Williams. I mean, threw a terrific game against Texas uh, Tech the other day. He really finished the season strong. Uh, I'm not as familiar with North Carolina State just yet. Vanderbilt obviously has Rocker and uh, Lighter. Texas has Ty Madden. Uh, Tennessee has a really good staff. Virginia is always known for pitching. And Mississippi State is, is said to have, you know, the best rotation in college baseball. So, None of this is a surprise. I mean, every team that is still there can collect out. You know, how each team does it is a little bit different. So I think it makes for an intriguing World Series. And I think it's going to be exciting to be in those competitive games and see all of that play out. Thank you. Next question, Alec White. Yeah, Jay, what did it mean to you Saturday or Sunday night to just be able to celebrate with all the players on the field and the families come and join and, and take part in that moment? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the best. I mean, it's, it's the best part of this job, you know, without being on the inside, you don't see the process. And a lot of coaches use the word process. 
the process of building to get that type of result where you get to celebrate a great achievement like that. And so uh, I think we've done a good job of that along the way. I mean, winning the Pac-12 was a great accomplishment, you know, no outright championship at the University of Arizona conference championship in 29 years. Okay, that needed to be celebrated and we were able to do that. And then a regional championship, you know, we were able to do that at home. And then super regional, obviously go to the College World Series. I mean, you know, getting to, to hug Daniel Susak and Vince Vanelli and Jacob Berry and Dante Williams and Tyler Casagrande and Tanner Otremba and literally all of them and, and see the happiness and that they and their families were getting to experience is, is awesome. You know, it's, it doesn't get any better than that. So it meant a lot. And then were there, was there a moment or a set of moments during the regular season or any of the regionals where you felt this team was built to be an Omaha team? Great question. I've always thought we were going to be really good in 2021. I think that's probably a story for a different time because um, the, the season is not over yet. But I've always felt really good about this year um, and going back a few years in advance. And then there's some things that have happened along the way that uh, really put those pieces in order. So uh, when we started the season, I knew we had a good team. There was no doubt that we were going to be a very good baseball team. I don't think I allow myself to, hey, this could happen because what I think can happen doesn't matter. You know, what we do matters. You know, we talk a lot about actions over feelings. And I think we've taken the right actions in recruiting and developing and committing to a sound team culture uh, to put ourselves in a position to have a championship type season like this has been and to play well, you know, with this opportunity coming up. And that's really where my thoughts are now. But I did believe we were going to have a great season this year. Next question, Matt Moreno. Maybe a little bit on a similar note, your players have had a lot of confidence throughout the season. Uh, where does that come from? I think they trust the work that they put in. They trust the process of what they have done. And when you put a really good process with really talented guys, with a commitment to improvement on a daily basis, with a commitment to doing it for each other, you know, a very selfless culture that's grounded in sound fundamentals, uh, a group of highly competitive people. And then they have the character to do that on a daily basis and make sound decisions. Now you're really talking about something. And I think that's what's happened. Um, I asked about this a little bit earlier in the season, uh, but it feels like it's still continuing to happen where you guys are getting better in certain areas. Uh, how comforting is that as a coach as you head into the College World Series? Very. I, I mean, I just, I would sum it up to this. I trust their mindset. And, you know, we, we coach, like we, we, we put stuff in front of them. And it hasn't just been, hey, let's roll the balls out and, and keep going. You know, the, the staff prepares well. The players prepare well. I mean, we're in week 18 now. I mean, that for college baseball, that's a long, it's as long as you can go, you know, in, unless you're in, in the finals. So um, their commitment to the weight room, uh, all of those things have been really, really good. So it's lent itself to improvement. I mean, again, it's something that is by design, not just hoping that it, it happens. So the players have put in the work, staff's put in the work, talent is there. And you, again, you put those things together, you get the improvement and it allows you to play your best when your best is needed. And I really believe Friday night's game and Sunday's game were the best we have played this year. And that's saying a lot because we've had a lot of really great performances. Next question back to Brian Peterson. Uh, do you have any update on uh, Randy and Gil? No, no update. Okay, do you, do you not anticipate them being able to make the trip? I don't have any update. Okay. Next question back to Michael Lev. What is the deadline for setting your roster for this? I am not sure, actually, at this point in time. I know it's not today. Okay. And can you change it at any point during, during the College World Series? I do not believe so. If there is a window, my guess would be would be between – the two brackets in the finals. If there is a window, that would be when it would be. But I, I don't think that you can. 
We've talked a lot about um, Jacob Berry and Daniel Susak. Um, in terms of their personalities, how would you compare and contrast those two guys? Comparisons, very committed to being the best player they possibly can be. Uh, very competitive in nature. They expect to do well. Uh, great work ethic. Uh, very intelligent, both of them. Uh, very baseball-minded. Uh, in terms of that, uh, I think it's been fun for me to see uh, at times, you know, both of them, when they show emotion, it feels like it's the appropriate time. Uh, similarly, um, they're great players that when they have had adversity, they have enough self-confidence to respond, you know, in a, a championship or a winning type player fashion. So you put all those things together with your talent. Now you have co-national freshman of the year type players. So I think there's the similarities. Um, I think uh, my communication with them is pretty consistent, you know, in dealing with them, you know, in a similar way because they are similar in that regard. Um, so I think they're far more alike than different in the things relative that make them the great players that they are. Sure, um, th this one could take a while, but. Um, you, we've talked a lot about Nate Yeski and, and his role on the team. We haven't talked a lot this season about the other coaches. I was hoping you could maybe go through, sort of give us a thumbnail of what the other coaches do and, and what they mean to yeah. the program, including, yeah, including, you know, Tyler and Cameron. Yeah, happy to. Um, I think, you know, we'll start with um, Dave Lawn. You know, I mean, our preparation all year has been elite. Our preparation in the NCAA tournament has been exceptional. And what I mean by that is the hit plan has been great. The pitch plan to get people out has been great. The defensive positioning has been great. And all four of us are intimately involved in all of that. I think with Coach Lon, you know, I asked him to do a job you know, without any practice in the fourth game of the season, which was to go out and coach third base and make decisions whether to send and hold runners and, and talk. And that's probably not very fair, but I knew it was the best thing for our team for me to come in the dugout for a variety of reasons. And I think he has done a really good job coaching third base, um, you know, in terms of stop signs, sending guys, all of those types of things, especially with no forewarning. I think it's another example of how quality of a person he is to take on whatever was in the best interest of the team. You know, he's done that a couple of times in his tenure here and has done it really, really well. Um, and he's just somebody I trust. I mean, it's eight years together at eight or nine, I'm losing track, but you know, I mean, the worst season we've had is we were 10 games over 500 or eight games over 500 and coach Lon has a lot to do with that. Um, so I think it's just the, the quality of person that he is, um, quality of baseball person that he is. I mean, he contributes a lot. Um, with Mark, I mean, the numbers are the numbers. And, you know, we work in tandem, hand in hand, relative to developing the hitters and developing the offensive plan. He's built a great rapport uh, with a lot of those guys. I think in terms of mindset, what we need to do to uh, improve what we need to do to be successful in the game, uh, mental stuff. Like most of that falls under my responsibility. Um, and then he and I are so in tune together with what makes a good hitter and swing mechanics and all of that. He does a terrific job taking players one-on-one -on -one and seeing where they're at and what they need to do. Um, and has done a great job with that. Um, I think he is also vitally important in uh, the defensive positioning and, and game plan. And I've said this for a couple of years. I mean, our outfield is always seems to always be in the right spot. Now it helps when you have Dante, you know, controlling 75% of the earth out there, it seems like. Um, but he's, he does a great job with the preparation part of it for the defensive positioning. Um, and again, another quality person, you know, relative to uh, Cameron, I mean, I think you guys know how I felt about him as a player. I mean, he's one of the most important, important pitchers that I've ever had on any of my teams in terms of fulfilling, hey, you're going to start, 
you're going to close, you're going to pitch at the tipping point. And just like, it's like, Hey man, whatever, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to get some dudes out. You know I mean? He recorded one of the biggest outs in school history and striking out Jake Mangum, you know, in the first game of the super regional at Mississippi state pitched six times in Omaha. And I think with Cameron, his mentality as a player and the competitiveness is going to make him a great coach someday um, because he really wants to win. And you have to have that if you want to be successful in this profession, because that drive is going to help you overcome the difficulties that come along with it. And I think he has that. Um, he's a great communicator. I mean, when I'm on the walkie talkie in the game saying, hey, get this guy up, this is the hitter we're thinking. I mean, he has total poise. I'll be you know, like, hey, get make sure this guy's throwing all his pitches from the stretch. Make sure he's, you know, featuring this pitch because this is what we're thinking with this guy. I just have complete trust that that is getting done down there. And so he's done a great job. You know, relative to Tyler uh, was a massive addition uh, to our staff, you know, when we had an opening uh, in January. And I was really looking for two things. You know, the NCAA lacks their rules in terms of throwing batting practice and hitting ground balls for the director of operations because of COVID. And that was the first criteria. I wanted somebody that could physically on the field do things that were going to help the players improve without coaching. And so he throws terrific batting practice. He's really good at uh, hitting ground balls, hits infield, outfield. And then my second criteria for the job is I just, I wanted a great person, somebody that I could trust, uh, that was selfless, that uh, he checks all of those boxes. And, um, you know, from the organizational skills, just the maturity uh, has been a big time, big time improvement and uh, helped us really improve as a staff. So all of these guys are exceptional and they're a large reason why we're sitting here having a video conference talking about the College World Series. Do we have any more questions for Coach Johnson? Great, thank you, Coach. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you. First question for Daniel Susak will go Brian Peterson. Daniel, uh, June 11th last year, you tweeted out Omaha. Um, what what was the the gist of that? Was it just something you were you were planning ahead or? Uh, yeah, for me it was a goal at the time. Um, when I started to see some key older players say that they were coming back as well, like Dante Blass, um, Vince Preston. When I saw that, it started to all come into action. Um, it started to come from, you know, like a goal to starting to put it into work. And then as soon as I stepped up on campus, I knew that this team had what it take, what it took. And then uh, every day since, it's just been getting there. And now, so now that we're there, it's trying to make the most out of it. Were, was there any point during the season where you were maybe a, less confident that this was going to happen? Uh, no. Um, for me, when we went to Frisco is when I really knew we had what it took. Um, that's when I really saw our team start to come together. And I feel like every team I've been on has been pretty close, but this one's the closest I've ever seen. It's uh, no matter where we are, it seems like we're always together. Locker room, field, uh, cages, even off the field, everybody's together and everybody's friends. And I think that's a huge part of a team is being friends off the field just as much on. How do you think that closeness has helped you guys uh, when you've had um, the more lopsided losses and then the ability to come back right after that and have, frankly, one of the better performances the next day? Yeah, it's helped a lot, especially with adversity. Um, there's never a bad mood in the locker room, never a bad mood in the clubhouse. It's always upbeat. You know, today's a new day. Nothing ever happened in the past. Even after we win, today's a new day. Today's a new challenge. And uh, the biggest one I saw all year where I knew our team was special was Washington. Um, obviously giving up, I think, three runs in the top of the 10th, 16 to 13, you know, pretty hard to come back from. Um, and then with two outs, uh, Tyler Casagrande pinch hitter or came in defensively to strike at bat. And then just seeing our whole team battle that way to go and get a win just really showed that, you know, we're never out of the fight. Thank you. Next question from Michael Lev. So it's, it's inherently exciting, I would imagine, to be going to the College World Series. Um, you guys get Vanderbilt in the first game. You know, you're in prime time. You're going to face either you know, Kumar Rocker or uh, um, Jack Leiter, who are projected to be top five picks. Are you excited about the matchup 
against, you know, one of the best, you know, it's going to be one of the best pitchers in college baseball. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, I think that's what you want. You don't want to get this far to not face the best of the best. Um, ever since I was little, you can ask my parents, my family too. I always wanted to, I used to pitch as well. I used to always want to pitch against the best team. Um, for me, that's just always been big is uh, competition. I feel like that's when the best of me comes out, um, even with emotion and energy. I feel like I'm most locked in when we play the best of the best. I think it just focuses me more. Sure. How, what impresses you the most about Jacob Berry's offensive um, arsenal? Um, each at bat gets better, in my opinion. Even when he's uh, not doing his best, it seems like he just switches to the next at bat and you know gets relocked in. Um, also, the ability to do it from both sides. Uh, I used to kind of dabble with switch hitting, and it can get tough. You know, sometimes one swing doesn't feel good, and the other does. And it seems like every time one side doesn't feel good, that's the side you're always having to hit from. And uh, it seems like it doesn't really matter for him. Um, it's just whichever side he seems locked in, and it's a great at bat from both sides. You never really see any fall off from either side. Sure, this is maybe a hard question because um, you know you probably aren't asked like to describe your personality very often on a day to day basis. But how would you compare like your personality and demeanor to Jacobs? I'd say very similar. Um, I feel like we're both pretty uh, kind of old solely, um, pretty serious people, but at the same time can be very you know outgoing at the same. Um, I think we both like to have fun, but at the same time know the task at hand and like to handle it seriously. And I think that's the biggest similarity between us is that uh, the competitive edge between both of us. He seems like, just from my observations, like a little more intense or outwardly fiery. Would you agree with that? Or do you maybe just hide it or not show it as much as he does? Um, yes and no. Um, I think we're both extremely competitive. Uh, I think a huge thing is we both don't like to lose. I think we both hate to lose more than we like to win. Um, for me, I just try to, if I have a bat at bat, just get rid of it before catching. So I try not to show it, you know, let the pitcher know that I'm as comfortable or making him as comfortable as he can be on the mound as well. Next question, Alec White. Yeah, there were a lot of families and, and friends that were out at, at Sunday's game in this weekend, and they were out, you know, out in the field celebrating. Did you have anybody from your side of the family that was there in attendance? And if so, who? Uh, I had about my whole family there, um, all about 100 of them. Uh, my dad actually left after Saturday because he thought he was bad mojo. He uh, started driving home. Um, it, he's just like that. He'll be back at Omaha, though. Um, I had my both my brothers, my parents, both of their wives, uh, my brother's wives, uh, my nephew was there. Uh, I had a bunch of friends there, a um, bunch of teammates, parents there, a bunch of people I've known my whole life. Just uh, a lot of support there, which I think is huge. Yeah, and what did it mean to you to have that support? And then how quickly did you go from celebrating that win to kind of turning the page to Omaha? Yeah, um, the support is huge for me, and uh, I'd expect even more at Omaha, especially with uh, my uncle will definitely be there, same with my cousin, and uh, a lot of my family will be there. Um, for me, turning the page was quick. I think the next morning is when I really started to focus on the next task at hand, but that night was definitely fun and special. I think I was out there till 12. I think we were the last family on the field, maybe me and Price, um, just kind of soaking it all in and kind of showing up my brother that never got to do it. Next question, Michael Lev. I don't imagine that you've ever caught this many games in one stretch, uh, starting almost every single day. How are you feeling physically these days? I feel good. Um, for me, it's just kind of uh, maximizing recovery um, with the weight room and then obviously with recovery uh, just for my legs and stuff like that. But I feel great. Um, obviously, the biggest series coming up. And uh, what's nice about there, too, is there's usually an off day after each game, um, which I think will help a little bit, but I feel great. Sure. Was there ever a point this spring where you were feeling, man, like, I'm, I'm tired. Like, I just, you know, I don't have as much energy as I normally do. Um, I don't think so. Uh, growing up uh, with travel ball and everything, I used to have to catch usually the first five of a weekend and then go pitch the championship game. So kind of being used to that. Uh, you don't really notice it as a kid, you know, you kind of question like 
how much am I playing? But then you see when you get older, how much it gets you ready for it. And uh, it's kind of one of those things where like you start to be thankful of the stuff that your parents did for you um, when you grow up. Sure. And you mentioned, you know, maximizing recovery. Have you um, changed your uh, routine at all or added any elements lately to sort of um, enhance the recovery process? I think lately the biggest thing for me is water. Um, just maximizing as much as I can, especially with the temperatures rising and uh, realizing that that's a huge component of it. Are there any more questions for Daniel? Yes, Matt Moreno, go ahead. Uh, the confidence you guys have had this season, has it come from just you guys internally from the coaching staff or where do you think the source of that confidence is with this group? It's come from a little bit of everything. Um, the coaches obviously are a big role of it. Um, I think the main part it comes from is every practice rep, you know, just kind of uh, working up that confidence within yourself. And a huge message, message that's been within the team is uh, you're here for a reason. And uh, just kind of knowing that each and every day that you're here for a reason, I think that builds up confidence within everybody because I know it does within myself. Coach has mentioned it a couple times that Friday and Sunday where he thinks the best games of your guys' season. To know that you're doing that going into Omaha, how much confidence does that, guy, does that give you guys knowing that you guys are playing well going into you know the College World Series? Yeah, it's a lot of confidence. I think, in my opinion, especially being a catcher, the biggest reason we played the best of those games is bullpen. Um, you see the bullpen step up in a critical way. I think Friday the bullpen came in for no runs. And then, obviously, Sunday was a lot of bullpen arms. And you just see Dawson Nets coming out there, setting the tone, pitching great. TJ Nichols behind him with his best outing of the year. And then turning it over to the two seniors that are pretty tough to hit at any day. One more question for Daniel. We'll go back to Michael. Sure. You guys don't uh, have the, the headline pitchers like Vanderbilt does. I mean, nobody in college baseball does, but you do have um, the benefit of depth. And you also have had a lot of guys who have improved over the course of the season. What do you feel like is the, is the strength of your pitching staff? I'd say mindset. I think Coach Yeski has installed a great mindset in every pitcher on our team. And uh, I think not being afraid of anyone, anyone or any task. And uh, I think on any day, any of our pitchers can be just as good as anyone in the country. And I think you see that all the time with our bullpen and our starters that any day anybody can come up and we can pitch our best on any day. And I think that's a huge testament to the mindset that we've instilled. Great. Thank you, everybody. That's all we have for today.